What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to graph quadratic functions in intercept form. And just to remind you, this is intercept form over here. So f of x is equal to a times x minus p in parentheses times x minus q in parentheses. Now, this first coefficient, a, it's just a positive or negative number. So when it's positive, your parabola is gonna open up like that. And if a over here is negative, your parabola opens down like that, okay? And then P and Q over here are your X intercepts. Okay, the only kind of special thing you have to do with these is just remember to take the opposite sign of both of these when you write down your X intercepts. All right, so to clarify, let's do this example right here. So we have F of X is equal to negative and then in parentheses X plus one times X minus five, right? So first thing you can see is that our coefficient A, it's a negative symbol, but it's basically a negative one like that, all right? But in either case, it's a negative number, so that means our parabola is going to open down, okay? And the other thing we can take from here are the x-intercepts. So here we have a positive one and a negative five, right? So our x-intercept for this one is going to be a negative one, and for this one it's going to be a positive five, okay? So I'll just write those out. So our x-intercepts they are at negative one and positive five. Okay, and just so you remember, x-intercepts are just the spots where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So we have one at negative one and positive five, right? So that'd be right here at negative one and at positive five, right there, right? So the parabola goes through both of these points. Okay, and remember our parabola opens down, so it's gonna look something like that. Okay, but we'll actually find the exact vertex and everything. Okay, so now to find the vertex, there's basically a two-step process. First, we need to find the axis of symmetry. Okay, so the axis of symmetry. And the way you do that is you just add up your x-intercepts together and then divide them by two. So here we're gonna say negative one plus five, right? Negative one plus five and then divided by two. So negative one plus five is equal to four. So four over two is equal to two. Okay, so our axis of symmetry is right here at x is equal to two. Okay, so we can draw that vertical line. So two's right there. So this is our axis of symmetry right there. So this is x is equal to two. Okay, now to find the vertex, all we have to do is plug in our x value right here into our function up here. Okay, so we're gonna say f of two, right, f of two, is equal to negative one times, and then uh, x plus one and x minus five that we're gonna plug in two, right? So we're gonna say two plus one, and we're gonna say two minus five. Okay, so then this is equal to, let's see, negative one times three times two minus five is negative three. Okay, so three times negative three is negative nine, and negative nine times negative one is positive nine. Okay, so this is our y value. So we know the x value, right, two, so our y value is nine. So the vertex is at two comma nine. Okay, and I didn't draw the graph high enough, so we'll just raise it up here and we'll just say that this is nine right there. Okay, so our vertex is right here at two comma nine, and then again, it just runs through these points at the x-intercepts right there, okay? Now the last two things we need to do are find the domain and the range. So the domain's always gonna be the same for all of these. It's always going to be all real numbers and you can just write the little symbol like that. And then for the range, so the domain, just to clarify, it's your X value or X limits and the range are the vertical values or limits, right? So for the range, you can see our graph. This is the very top of the graph. And then the, or the parabola, I should say, the parabola runs down towards negative infinity like that, okay? So the very top of our parabola over here is at positive nine. So we can say that the range is y is less than or equal to positive nine. All right, here's the next function. So we have g of x is equal to two x squared minus eight, right? So the first thing you might notice is that this is not in intercept form. So we need to convert it to that first. And you do that simply by factoring this, okay? So if we factor two x squared minus eight, the first thing I can do is pull out a positive two, right? Positive two, and then on the inside, I'm just gonna be left with x squared Right, x squared minus four. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to two, and now x squared minus four, we can factor that down even further. So this is gonna be x plus two times x minus two. And I know that because 
this is a kind of a special case of factoring, right? So we have x squared minus a perfect square. So to break that down, you just split up the x's, right, for the x squared. And then we have a negative 4 over here. So then you just basically take the square root of it, which is 2. So you put 1 positive and 1 negative. Okay, but in either case, now this is fully broken down, right? So we have g of x is equal to 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 2, right? So now it's an intercept form. Okay, so remember our a value tells us if our parabola is going to open up or down. So here this is positive, so we know it's going to open up like that. And then we can grab our x-intercepts from here again, right? So we have a positive 2 and a negative 2. So for this one, our x-intercept is negative 2. And for this one, it's going to be positive 2, right? So we have x-intercepts at negative 2 and positive 2. Okay, so again, if I graph these, I'm going to have one at negative 2 and at positive 2, right? The other thing we have to do is find the axis of symmetry so we can find the vertex. Okay, so again, the axis of symmetry, it's this little formula right here. So x is going to be equal to, so just adding these two up and then divided by 2, right? So we're going to do negative 2 plus 2 divided by 2. So that's equal to negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So 0 divided by 2 is equal to 0, okay? So we have the axis of symmetry at x is equal to 0. So this is our axis of symmetry, right? So again, to find the vertex, all we have to do is plug in the axis of symmetry into this function. So we're going to have g of 0 is equal to 2 times 0 squared minus 8. All right, 0 squared is equal to 0, and then 0 times 2 is still equal to 0. So then this is equal to 0 minus 8, which is negative 8. All right. So we just found our y value, right, for the vertex. So our vertex is at 0, comma, negative 8. Okay, so 0, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right there. Okay, and then we could just play connect the dots like that. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to do is, again, just find the domain and the range. So the domain is all real numbers, and then the range for this one, well, let's see, the lowest point on our parabola is right here at y is equal to negative 8. And then they head in this direction right towards positive infinity. So we can say that the range is all the y values that are greater than or equal to negative 8. All right, last one here. So we have y is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 30, right? So as you can tell, it's not an intercept form. So we're going to have to factor it again to convert it to intercept form, okay? So we're converting this right here, right? So the first thing we can do is pull out this negative 2. And then that'll leave us with x squared plus 2x minus 15 in parentheses. Okay, so then this is going to be equal to negative 2. And then this in parentheses, we can factor it again, right? So we can break that down. So here we have an x squared. So we can break that down into x times x. And then all we need to do is find two numbers that multiply together to get negative 15, but they have a difference of positive 2. Okay, so in this case, that would be a positive 5 and a negative 3, right? Because positive 5 times negative 3, that's equal to negative 15. And they have a difference of positive 2, right? 5 minus 3 is equal to positive 2, okay? So that's how you break those down. And as you can see, this is now in intercept form. Okay, so as you can see by looking at our a number right here, it's negative, so we know the parabola is going to open down. And then the y, or sorry, the x intercepts right here are going to be negative 5 and positive 3, right? Negative 5 and positive 3. So the x intercepts are at negative 5 and positive 3, okay? Now we just need to find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is at x is equal to, and then just add these two numbers and divide it by 2, right? So negative 5 uh, plus 3 divided by 2, and that's equal to negative 2 divided by 2, which is equal to negative 1, okay? So our axis of symmetry is at x is equal to negative 1, okay? So now to find the vertex, or the y-coordinate of the vertex, I should say, all we need to do is plug in the uh, x value, right, into the original function right here. So we're going to get y is equal to negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 30. 
Okay, negative one squared is equal to positive one and positive one times negative two is equal to negative two. All right, so then uh, this is equal to negative two and then plus four plus 30. All right, negative two plus four is equal to positive two. So positive two plus 30 is equal to 32, all right? So we just found the y value of our vertex right here, 32, right? So then the vertex is at negative one, 32. Okay, so that's a lot of hash marks I'm gonna have to draw for 32, which is why I didn't write it in here, but I'm gonna put 32 right there. So, and um, I'll put a few little hash marks right here. So the vertex is at negative one, 32, right? Negative one, 32, so we'll say right there. And then we know we have x-intercepts at negative five and three. So we're gonna put one more right there. And so we have one at negative five and three, and then we can uh, draw our parabola like that, all right? Remember the axis of symmetry was right here at x is equal to negative one, right? So we can put our little dashed line right there. And then lastly, the domain and the range. So the domain again, same thing, all real numbers. And then the range in this case, it's gonna be, so we have a maximum value at 32 and then the parabola goes in the negative infinity direction, right? So all our y values are going to be less than or equal to positive 32. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.